It's cassette deck day. I have a Sony three head plastic because there's a lot of plastic in this unit. Tape deck that, um, well, it's not working properly. And I'll tell you right now, I'll let the cat out of the bag. I am going to fix this one. It's not a difficult one if you know how to take it apart and put it together. So let's check it out. This is a Sony TCKE 500 and the owner says it doesn't work. So let's plug it in and see what this one is uh, doing or not doing. Another start to another heat wave here in my neck of the woods. It's not super hot today, but it's, it's going to get hot this week. So they say, we'll turn on the power and it lights up. The display lights up. Let's just see whether, first of all, we have any tape movement. So fast forward. Nothing. Nothing in rewind. How about play? So play is moving, but it's not taking up the tape. Observe. So of course that's going to result in an eaten tape immediately. As uh, there's no take up. So now we know where to look. We have no take up or supply reel rotation on either fast forward, rewind, or play. So we got our work cut out for us. Should tear this one apart. And see what's broken. So here's the mechanism open. Let's just observe what happens when I run it through the motions. Do you see that? How about now? Do you see what the problem is? I certainly do. There's no belt on this pulley. The belt is right there. The belt has come off the pulley. Now how did that happen? Is the belt worn? Myself, personally, I think what happened on this is as this belt is aged, some of it is stuck to the, the outside of the pulley here and it may have stuck to the belt and caused the belt to flip off of its pulley and land down in here. There's the belt there. Anyway, this one's getting a new belt and we got to clean that mess up. I have to laugh. My son is one of these people that uh, doesn't like to uh, go out and get his food so he orders the uh, shit the dishes people and he just waited almost two hours to get his food delivered. I don't think this guy will be getting more than like zero stars. He was telling me he ordered his food at 1.30 and it's now 3.24 and the guy just showed up. <laughs> That's funny. Could have walked up there and got it faster. But uh, he doesn't want to put down the joystick, I guess. Okay, um process to do this I'm gonna to have to take this mechanism apart to change out that belt and uh, hopefully I've got one I probably have one the size or close enough uh, this belt doesn't appear to be too bad but the fact that it's come off once means it's probably a little bit on the loose side so we'll uh, we'll change it I'm just trying to think the best way to get this I think if I, if I take the mechanism right out of the unit itself if I pull the mechanism out probably the easiest way. There'll be a couple screws on the bottom that have to come out and a couple screws on the back. And that should uh, remove the mechanism on this one. And then I think there's just two. I can unplug I can unplug the, the uh, ribbon connectors or flexible connectors here. And I think just these two screws here need to come out and uh, then the whole mechanism should 
lift out. Gotta like this little really gotta like this little small screwdriver. I really like this thing. This is a nice little screwdriver. Nice and expensive little electric screwdriver, but it's a nice screwdriver nevertheless. Okay, what do I gotta do now? Take the lid off. I don't know whether this comes out easily or or do I have to pull the whole front off this thing? I think I gotta pull the whole front off this unit. So four more screws. be able to lift this out now. See, I had to lift this off because I needed to get clearance. What else is holding this up? Oh, there's some wire ties that are holding it up in the way. If I lift this out of the way, now I can lift the whole the mechanism out and, of course, undo the wire ties. They're holding the head wires in place. Okay, there we go. All right, now I've got the mechanism out. Um, I don't know that I got to take it apart any further than this. Well, at least disconnect it. I don't know if I can do it without disconnecting it or whether I should just unplug the head. Maybe I'll just unplug the head wires just so I can get the, the, the rest of the unit out of the way. So the head plugs in. Get the back here. One connector back here. And the other one is near the front. Should be three connectors. And one more near the back. There, that should remove the mechanism. Okay, now I can get this out of the way. three screws come out I have to remove this circuit board here so I'll undo this plug for the motor we'll get the circuit board out of the way because there's likely another screw that's got to come out in here maybe not okay now what I've got to take out I got to remove this bracket to get okay I don't probably don't have to take it off all the way I just have to take it off enough that I can slip the belt off of the pulley and we'll find another belt and clean up that pulley Okay, so the belt can come off there. Slip it around the back side of that pulley. And if I can get it off the motor, which is going to be another challenge, I may have to remove the capstan motor to do it. So we'll just, we'll just lift the belt off here, kind of put the belt over and hold it up over on one of those just to hold it in place. Now I should be able to remove the entire plastic mount. There's a lot of plastic on this thing, isn't there? Okay, that'll lift down like that. Like that. Okay. So I'll just leave that sit there for now. This is the belt that I gotta get off of this pulley and get around this gear. And now I gotta see if I can find one. To replace this small belt. So I've got another belt here. It appears to be the about the same size as the original one. Just has a little more elasticity to it. This one here is not worn out but it's likely starting to lose some of its elasticity. This one here's got a fair bit more uh, elasticity to it so we're going to put this one in goes in behind that lever around the pulley and then I have to fish it in 
once I get the mechanism back together. I have to fish it around the other pulley. So we reassemble the mechanism. A lot of plastic on this thing. Jeez. Take the belt around the pulley here. This is uh, what cassette decks got to in the in the end, right when, right at the end when cassette decks were being phased out. Plastic. Fit the mechanism back together. You gotta be careful because this stuff gets brittle, especially this white plastic. This stuff gets really brittle, so you don't want to put any force whatsoever. On. The black plastic breaks easy too, by the way. But uh, I get nervous whenever I have to take one of these apart because I'm scared that one of these little pins is going to break off. It's happened before on units that are younger than this. And the older this plastic gets, the more brittle it becomes. The worst plastic I ever saw was the cabinets that Panasonic my used. Belt. Can I get back on here as well? On their Tao and we Gao televisions. Especially the Gao. I had more than one back shatter. It's a bunch of little plastic pieces that have to fit together. This is nail biting time to get this to, to go together without putting any stress on it. And I'm literally just kind of easing it together. Because this plastic is so battle that it'll it'll crack or break just if you look at it the wrong way. <sighs> and good luck trying to get a replacement. I know someone's gonna sound off. Oh, just three D print it. Well, that's easy if you have the equipment to 3D print and you've got the CAD software and you know how to make the parts up. But uh, for the rest of us, 3D printing is not an option. And I've seen 3D printed parts. And the ones I've tried to use in the past, like for a VCR, for example. Oh, it's got to go in behind this. No good. Wouldn't handle the stresses. Here. This gear's got to be down. Try this again. This gear has to be down like that. Yeah, that goes in place like that. These two little catches have to line up with this plastic. Uh, there's two plastic catches here and here that have to go into into the back of the chassis here. Has to go over it. It's uh, there we go like that. Those two are on. That 
piece slides in like that, and then we put the belt over top of the, the uh, capstan motor. Make sure that it's it's turning good. Okay. And now I can put these screws back in. So we're going to pull the, the head wires around and lock them back in with the wire tie that's around the side here. Pull the wires out of the way. And now I can reattach. I put the two screws in here to hold the, the chassis in place. Now I can reattach the front cover. The side is locked in. And now the two holes are lined up on the bottom so I can put the two screws in to hold the deck in place and of course put the remainder, uh, remaining screws in for the uh, rest of the cabinet. These two are a little bit shorter than the others. If you're wondering where all the time went, a uh, buddy of mine called me on the ham radio and I hadn't talked to him for a while, so we were having a little conversation. He was telling me he just was up in Kelowna for a little trip and uh, couldn't believe that uh, the hotels were asking $1,200 a night. And I said, pardon? He said, yeah. He said, that's what I said when they uh, told me the price. He says, I said, pardon? I remember when the place used to be able to get a hotel, a nice hotel for about a hundred bucks a night. Not anymore. Not now. It's a resort town now and uh, they think everybody's millionaires. I think my uh, cordless screwdriver is about dead. One light. Oh, I got a bit of juice left, I guess. I'll have to charge this thing up. I only charge this thing like twice since I've since I've had it, so it seems to go forever. Anyway, let's uh, power this unit up now and see whether it uh, whether it works. So put the cassette door back on. And loader tape. And we'll see whether it goes into fast forward and rewind first. So fast forward. There we go. Rewind. Play. And we have sound. Uh, I don't know what noise reduction was used on this, so we'll make a recording on this tape. And uh, this this deck having Dolby S, we'll play with it with Dolby S. So let me just set up to do a recording. First, we'll check the unit for speed. Uh, the speed adjustment control on this one is right on the back here. It's right on the back of this little circuit board, right down. There's a little speed adjustment 
right there. Okay, that's the speed adjustment for this tape deck the motor. So let's uh, check the speed. Got my 440 hertz tape loaded. Let's check it out and see how close it is. Now, for those wondering, where's the scope plugged into? The scope is just plugged into one of the line outputs. I basically just unplug one plug. I have a I have a cord on my scope. It's just a got a BNC on one end and an RCA on the other. I just plug one in to the scope. And I plug the other one into one of the line outputs. It doesn't matter. If I was doing azimuth or something, I'd I'd have obviously both the left and the right plugged in so that I could do a phase adjustment. We're not doing that on this one. We're only going to check the speed and make sure that the speed is, is accurate. It should be pretty close. Let's just check it out and see. That's pretty close. Hmm. My amplifier was distorting a bit there. Didn't you hear that? That's the, that's the amp that's doing that. That's a Pioneer SX240. Not sounding that good, is it? Hmm. Let's try the other side of this tape and see how this one sounds. I'll turn this volume down just so that you guys don't have to listen to it screeching. 3.00 kilohertz. Pretty close. A little bit of flutter. Okay, time to do a test recording. Incidentally, that flutter is uh, would be this deck causing it because the uh, deck that made that recording was a, a direct drive dual capstan certified calibration machine. I have two. I have a JVC TDV 1010 and I have a Technics RSM 275. Both direct drive. Both have been certified for speed. And the wound flutter on those decks is almost unmeasurable. That's very good. Okay, let me set up. We're going to do a recording in Dolby S just so that uh, I can show this off as to what it's capable of delivering with Dolby S. Okay, I'm going to play a track here. This is one that uh, I remember going way back to the days when I had a direct TV receiver. And uh, this is going back to the 90s. And they did a, a card swap. And we had to get new access cards. I had a subscription to one and I had it subscribed through an address that I had in the States. I had it subscribed through a post office box. So I had to go down and, and collect my new card and I kept delaying doing it even though I knew they were sending me a card. One day I turned it on and all I could get was one channel which had a, a screen on telling me that I had to change my card and this is the song that they were playing. Whoops. Ah, I missed it. I gotta start the tape up here. So let's uh, put this into record. We'll record this track. That song was burned into my brain because that's all I could get on my satellite receiver was this one song repeated over and over and over as soon as it finished it started the game with just the just the screen telling me that I had to install my new access card to get my programming and of course a couple years later when my business partner and I went shopping for royalty free music for our production business and uh, he went a little bit crazy and spent like $2,500 on royalty free content from Music Bakery 
wouldn't you know I'm going through it and then I come across this track and say, damn, I know that track. <laughs> I, I heard it over and over and over again. There's another track that's in my library too that uh, you'd hear if you phoned back in the day, if you phoned uh, technical support at Blackberry, they had a track from Music Bakery on their music on hold system. Anyway, I'm recording this in Dolby S. We're gonna play it back and I'm gonna pipe it right into the camera so you guys can hear how it sounds. So let's do that. Okay, that uh, about does it for this one. TCKE500S Sony three head single direction cassette deck with Dolby BC and Dolby S, as well as HX Pro. This was, I wouldn't say it's their t anywhere near the top of the line machines, but it actually performs pretty good. A lot of plastic in it though. You know, this is one of the later generation. Uh, cassette decks and everything was plastic. I like the earlier ones where everything was all metal, but uh, it is what it is. It's working. It's got two belts in it. The capstan belt seems to be in still in good shape. Lots of torque on it. It's not slipping. So, so you say not slipping. Don't change it. Eventually, it'll need to be done. But considering the quality of a lot of the belts out there today, with the uh, just the thickness of them, is they most of them most of the the uh, the knockoffs that you see you buy a pack of 30 belts 
and you might get five that actually are cut correctly and the other 25 there's variations I mean it's it's a sad state of affairs for belts it used to be you could buy belts and you knew you were getting good belts but today all the new ones are you know it's hit and miss and you'll find places that are selling old belts and if you find an old belt well it depends on how long it's been sitting in that plastic bag because I've bought old stock belts and opened the bag up and they're just as spongy as the one I'm taking off they all stretch and they have no elasticity to them because they've been sitting for 30 years and that's the problem is age is not good to the rubber belts if they're there there's two types there's synthetic and there's natural rubber and I don't know which ones of the two are the ones that are problem whether it's the natural rubber ones that are going bad or whether it's synth synthetic but you'll get some belts that are old like old as anything and they're fine and there's other ones that are the same age that they're not so I don't know whether it's the synthetic rubber ones that are are lasting longer and not deteriorating or whether it's a natural rubber because I've I've heard comments on both sides some people will say it's the synthetic belts that are garbage and others will say it's the natural rubber belts that are garbage so I don't have an opinion because I don't know which ones I've been taking out that are bad I just know that some of them turn to goo or others lose their elasticity and then there's other ones that are 25 30 years old and they're fine some of them get a little bit slippery but they're not like you can you can rough them up a bit and then there's the ones that you can throw in the microwave and boil them for 10 minutes and they're like new so a lot of them that are not turning to goo you could do that with and they work just fine how long they work couldn't tell you I've done some and you know three four years later they're still working fine so your mileage may vary if you're going to try boiling but uh, sometimes we have to resort to that just because getting good quality new belts these days is like playing Russian roulette you're not you don't know whether you're gonna get a good one or a bad one and more times than not you're going to get a bad one sometimes you can get away with a small o-ring if it's a round belt you can get a small o-ring and it'll actually work better than some of these garbage belts but it's the flat ones that tend to be more of an issue if they're not cut completely straight they don't fit the pulley properly and then you get high wound flutter anyway thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye for now